Love in the Comfort Avenue 2. Um, as an actor, before I go deep into this video that I'm about to film about sexual assault, rape, and um, acting, and how all this stuff, this has absolutely nothing to do with Harvey Weinstein. And this is about the actor from That's So Raven, Orlando Brown, who claims to have been raped by Michael Jackson and Will Smith. And had oral sex with um, um, Nick Cannon. And um, I'm going to play devil's advocate. So this is going to be a two or three part video. And the thing with that is, you know, um, I haven't been discovered. And I've been at this for 19 years. I have not caught a break. And this guy actually had made it and was successful. You know, but he's not really working now, I guess. Which is what makes me suspicious about these articles and all this other stuff and his rave in um, Walmart about oral sex with Nick Cannon just as a female and all kinds of other stuff. So first, in this business, you know, apparently if you're not relevant, you're not working. And if you are relevant, you're getting into trouble of some sort of some kind. But I don't understand how this happens. You know, I really don't. I know how this business works, and some of us got it, and I clearly don't, but I know how this business works, you know, um, I'm longing for the day when someone says, we want that guy, check, let's give him a job, let's um, make his movies, let's do what he wants to do, let's film this guy and make him somebody. So my personal story is, is that I'm not discovered. And I'm going to break this down for you. First, I'm going to show you this um, headline here. Before my Facebook people pop back up. Now, I'm going to read it to you. It says, That's so Raven actor Orlando Brown claims that Will Smith and Michael Jackson raped him in a bizarre video rant. I'm going to give you a small taste of the article. Actor Orlando Bloom is best known for his role as Eddie Thomas on the That's So Raven show. So, he claims that Will Smith and Michael Jackson sexually assaulted him in an incoherent video that was posted online. Brown said that Jackson set him up and later inserted that he was an actor's son of Trey Smith. Brown had well-documented issues since the hit Disney program ended and reported the inquester. The 32-year-old was arrested on felony neglect charges or neglect charges back in 2018. Clips from, from his recent video posted in the Neighborhood Talks Instagram page where he is a troubled actor spoken into the camera, um, picking his hair, and he's surrounded off, uh, he sounded off on, um, Will Smith and Michael Jackson. At the beginning of the video, Brown mentions the Men in Black actor says that Jackson was one was the one who set him up with Will Smith. It was unclear which person was referring throughout the video because I eventually claimed that he that they are both one and the same. So Brown said that not only was he assaulted, but all of the children were as well. I'm not going to read this part because it has the N-word in it, but I'm actually I'm going to read the part. It says, that N, Michael Jackson, bro, that N set me up. What are you talking about? N, rape me as a kid, you B, A, you rape me as a kid, and you rape all my kids. Okay, I didn't know the guy had kids. Brown mentioned every time he sees Smith on television, he wants to harm him. But his restraint of himself because of the Bible scripture, he threatened the 51-year-old to no longer make television appearances. Every time I see you, I want to slice your neck, MF, Major Pain actor said. I don't remember him being in Major Pain, but okay. But I didn't see all the major pain because I boycotted it. Um, skipping down a little bit, um, Brown intimidated that Smith wanted him dead and 
had assaulted him while taking his home, taking him home and belongings. He ended the disturbing rant and claimed that Smith and Jackson actually are the same person. But we know that part's not true because Will Smith is still alive and Michael Jackson's ass is dead. Alright. He raped me and then turned me into a kid. What? He raped me then turned me into a kid. He took my house. He took all my shit. Started raping my family members and all kinds of shit, bro. The actor said. Earlier this year, he reported in hip new, hot new hip hop post of another insert video in which he claimed he had gave sexual an encounter with Wildin' Out Nick Cannon in 2018. Brown's friends had held an intervention for him on a Dr. Phil show. I clearly missed that shit. Um, that's pretty much the gist of that. Um, I watched the video. There's another article, so we're just gonna click right over to that. Orlando Brown accuses Michael Jackson and Will Smith of sexual assault. Uh, it's pretty much the same shit. And, um, the clip went viral of him hurling abuse at Will Smith and referring to him and Michael Jackson is still alive. And I think there was another article, because there was three when I Googled this shit. And the third one, uh, Lando Brown, Will Smith raped me when I was a child actor. Here is the video. I don't know if this shit's going to play. Let's find out. I'm sorry, technology. This shit might not play. Oh, that nigga set me up, bro. On everything I love, that nigga set me up, bro. You feel me? That nigga is tripping, bro. That nigga be on some other shit, my nigga. Like, straight the fuck up. What are you talking about, my nigga? You raped me as a kid, you nigga. You raped me as a kid and you raped all my kids, And you still trying to fucking get away with your nigga. What do you mean? I'm sitting right here. Every time I see you, I want to slice your neck, mother. You you really, really have to understand what the Bible says, bro. The Bible says, it says, honor your mother and your father for your days are long. I ain't killed you for that reason. Don't you ever get on a fucking TV show and act like I'm the motherfucker when you rape me. You rape everybody. Oh, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Okay, so this is like new to me, you know, I'm um trying to get my career started, this ain't the way I'm trying to do it, that's for damn show, but you know, um, I know how this business works, you know, a lot of people can't stay relevant, so they come up with all kinds of incidences, and there's another article, you know, I'm trying to undo whatever the hell I'm doing here. No, I don't give a damn about puppies and kittens and all that other crap. The point of the matter is, I don't know if this guy needs help. I don't know if he's telling the truth. The fact of the matter is, oh, come on. Get the fuck off my phone. That is not what I want. I don't even know who that is. I don't know who IG spokesperson Reasons claim his partner Emmanuel Hudson is gay. I don't know any of those guys. And if he's gay, that ain't my problem. Now that's his life, let him live it. Um The thing with these articles, you know, I don't know if you can take them with a grain of salt or whatever, you know. But with this guy, he's been noted on more than one occasion of doing this shit. Uh, this one is a totally different clusterfuck, so we're not going into there. That was about Michael Jackson's nephew and 50 Cent. Okay. There is an article of uh, Orlando Brown from That's So Raven. I guess talking to Raven? I don't really know. Let me push the button. Uh, he's caught by crystal meth. Alright, let's go there. Because a lot of actors get on drugs, and then it's all she fucking wrote for them from then on out. 
I don't know if this guy's been caught buying crystal meth. I don't know this guy from Adam and Eve, all right? And to be honest, I so really did not watch that So Raven. I didn't. I watched the Cosby Show, but I never watched that So Raven. I'm older than them, so that really wasn't my um my cup of tea. You know, that wasn't my thing. That So Raven was anything but something that I watched. Hell, I might have watched Kim Possible once or twice, but I never really watched That So Raven. I, the only Disney show that I will honestly say that I recall watching was Gargoyles. My alarm clock, which will go off in 15 minutes, will have the Gargoyles theme. But, you know, some shows just weren't for me. You know, for real, they just weren't for me. You know, but in this incident, you no. Know, in this incident, in itself, you know, we have to understand that this guy is an actor. And I don't know if it's because he's not working. I'm not working. I've never had an acting job where I actually am working. But I'm not going to go as far as this guy to get work. You know, when it happens, it's going to happen. You know, and I'm hoping that it's happening really soon. Because, you know, if I get signed to any damn thing, I'm going to have to take it. Because I want a life better than the one I'm having. You know, if that means I have to become a wrestler in the Scarlet Spider suit and worry about my damaged tip, then so be it. But, you know, I'm more than willing to take that job. Because it's better than cleaning toilets for a living. Of course, COVID-19 is, like, totally screwing up everybody anyway. But, um, yeah, you know, the, the simple fact is that, you know, some, sometimes, you know, <sighs> sometimes as actors, we, um, we tend to lose credibility, we tend to not work, we tend to, um, you know, not be noted anymore, or successful in things like that, and we, um, we tend to do things that we wouldn't normally do. And a lot of actors who have lost success do that. And, and that's the thing with acting. This business is a drug, all right? And for some of us, it's all we've got. Because, you know, not all humble beginnings have good endings. You know, there are a lot of actors that make it. And, and once they make it, they still commit suicide. The guy from Veronica's Closet, he worked really hard. He got the job. It only lasted one season because he committed suicide. They had just got picked up and he committed suicide. So he ended a lot of people's jobs, you know, by committing suicide. I mean, without even fucking thinking about that shit, you know. And then there's a lot of actors who just don't, um, they don't have the mental capacity to deal with the shit that comes with this job. Acting is, um, it is a, it is an enigma style job, all right? You have many different type of acting. You have streaming service now, so it's not impossible for me to get a job. I just got to get my foot in the damn door. The problem with, with a lot of acting is that if you can't get noticed, you can't get work. And this could be his, his deal. You know, he might not be able to get work because he can't get noticed. He might not want to keep being tag cast as the same guy. And here you have me. Let me tell you something. If there's a paycheck involved, you can typecast me all you fucking want because I'm going to get paid. And that sounds cheesy, but you're not in this business. You have not bust your ass for 19 years and never caught a break. So, you know, if I catch a break and my show lasts for like two years and they're like, all right, well, we have a job for you. You're going to play that same guy that you were four years ago when your show was hot. And that's how it's going to be. Well, let's say I only get jobs as superheroes. Hell yeah, I'll take that. I only get jobs as supervillains. Hell yeah, I'll take that. You know why? Because I'll be working, you know, and that's it. And working is the most important thing to an actor. It's not so much the fame and the money. It's just working because when you are an actor, when you are entertaining anyone, being in front of that camera is like next to being in heaven. All right? And any actor who tells you otherwise... 
no longer wants to act. You know, it's the same thing with, like, the guys from um, The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. One of the twins just got tired. He just didn't want to act anymore. You know, and decided to, to drop everything and get a 9 to 5. And I guess he's happy because he hasn't made any other things. And his brother is um, still acting and playing Archie, I believe. I'm not going to swear that because I don't really watch Riverdale. But, you know, I'm too busy trying to get my own career off the ground to watch TV. I really would love to have been in a spinoff of Supernatural because that's the kind of shit that I'm into. Or some kind of martial arts show. Hell, I would have killed him in a Power Ranger. But I just couldn't get any doors open. And I still can't get doors open to this day. And so, you know, the good news is that my face still looks young enough to pass for a younger person. But I need to work in acting. Uh, excuse me. When you're in acting, you not only want to work, but you need to work because you are addicted to being in front of that camera. And anybody who tells you otherwise, they're not telling you the truth. Because when, when I'm in front of that camera, when I'm in front of this camera, I'm free. I am free. I can be whatever character I want. I can do what I want. If you ask if of me and if it's physically possible for me to do it, I'm going to do it. Now, if you ask me to do Shakespeare, yeah, that's going to be one that's not going to happen. But, you know, um, if you ask me to do Jesus Christ Superstar, you guys have heard me sing. Nah, that's not going to happen either. But other than that, anything else, you know, Kung Fu Fighter, Native American Warrior, Anything that involves something that I can do physically with little little lineage or little dialogue. Because I'm not really big on dialogue acting unless it's improv. But, you know, this business will eat you up and spit you out. And you have to be prepared for that. And agents, acting agents and actors should be told that from the jump. The second that you get signed, it's like, look, dude, this is a rough-ass business. And I haven't been signed. You don't have to tell me how rough this business is. I've been to like 90-something cattle calls. And all I've gotten every time for 19 years is the same shit. You're not a bad-looking man, Mr. Williams. You're just not what we're looking for. Either I'm too tall, which I'm never going to be too tall, so I'm too short, or it's the color of my skin, or they don't really know where to categorize me because I'm mixed. They don't know... Are you black? Are you Native American? Are you white? What are you mixed with? And even if that's not the only issue, there are no stories that I can play the hero in. There are absolutely, positively no stories where I can be the hero. Where I can play the part where someone is mixed is the lead. There is none. And it's not because The Rock's taking all the jobs. The Rock gets asses in the seat. Period. But I'm multicultural. He's biracial. There are no stories written by Hollywood actors because there are no multicultural people writing the stories. There's blacks and whites, so you have, and there's Asians. So you have a movie that's pro Asian that's only about Asians. So you cast only Asians. Do I look Asian to you? No. I could probably pass for Hawaiian because they are also Asians, they're Polynesians. I could probably pass for a Native American who are also Asians, but if you're not making a movie about a tribal life, I'm not going to get that role. Uh, let's say we're going to make a movie about black people. Black people aren't going to give me the job because my skin tone might be too light or my facial structure might not be black enough. My nose might not be big enough. My nose might be too big. It might depend on what they see in their vision of their mind of their character. I could have a great interview and be like, yeah, yeah, he did a good interview. We like what he does, but we're not going to give him the job. It happens. You can be the greatest actor and never be discovered. You can be a great actor and be discovered. You can be a great actor until you're not. It's just the way this business works. It is a doggy dog business. It will eat you up. It will spit you out. And whatever is left, you're either going to pull your ass together and get back up and keep trying or you're just going to fall to the wayside, which is what I have been trying to avoid. I want to quit this shit every day. But I want to fucking make one good movie before I do. Just one. You know, just to show people that I did it. And I could do it. And the thing is, you know, if you don't have people who are mixed writing the scripts, there's no scripts for me. You know, 
they can, they'll modify scripts for The Rock. But they'll look at me and be like, Psh, fuck you, you're like five foot nothing. And The Rock's six five, six six. So they were like, eh, you know, if we're going to compare, if we can get people in the seats to watch The Rock, you are roughly unknown. In fact, you are completely unknown. And no one's going to watch you. That's pretty much how this business works. And you can't get known if no one gives you a shot to get known. You know, I would be happy with just making cameos. You know, and for those who don't know what that is, some cameos have dialogue, some cameos don't. You know, like the cameos, the guys that did, What's up? Did, you know, a simple catchphrase, What's up? Those guys did nothing. But sit there, What's up? What's up? What's up? I can't even get arrested getting looked at. So, yeah. If there's no mixed people writing the scripts, there's no mixed actors working. And then if you are a mixed actor working, you, again, don't get the home life of someone who's mixed. You get, okay, well, we're going to pull in your parent, but we're going to make, because if your skin's lighter, we're going to make your mom white. You may have one scene, if anything, with your mom and dad in the same scene. But you don't get the home life of that. And if you, if your skin's darker, we're going to have your mom or your dad be dark. And you're going to get that one scene with them maybe together. But as for their home life, psh, irrelevant. Now as for this guy, Orlando Brown, I'm going to make a second part to this because I went off track. So in the second part, I'm going to give you the heads up now. I'm going to deep dive into what's going on with this shit, man, because you know, I like fantasy. Everybody does. I'm watching the Avengers right now. But I like fantasy. And the thing about fantasy is, you know, you got to come to reality eventually. This is Comfort Having Number Two. Stay tuned for part two. Be seeing ya.